Oh, hi, it's Steve Hassan, and I have a very special guest uh, on Zoom all the way from Hawaii, Vernon, Hello. Uh, who kindly consented to, uh, to talk with me today. Uh, this November 18th of 2018 is the 40th anniversary of the tragic massacre of so many wonderful men, women, and children. I believe over 300 children died in the jungles of Jonestown, and Vernon was there. So Vernon, please introduce yourself. And you know, I really want people to, to understand more that this was a very real cult and real people were, were killed. Yeah, my name is Vernon Gosney. I was a member of the People's Temple from age 19 to 25. I um, was in Jonestown from March 78 to November uh, 18th. I was with Congressman Ryan uh, when he was killed at the Katuma Air, uh, Airstrip. And he is, he made it possible for me to leave Jonestown. And, um, uh, so Vernon, were you on the Airstrip while he was killed and you were shot in your stomach three times? Is that what yeah. happened? Yes. We left uh, Jonestown to Port Kaituma and then um, later on the assassins came and I was shot three times and Congressman Ryan was killed yeah. along with other people. So that was as we were leaving. Mm -hmm. um, so we really wouldn't reveal uh, what was happening in, in Jonestown which mm -hmm. was um, a lot of mind control that Jim Jones used. He um, controlled all the information. He controlled all of our uh, input of whatever we received. You know, we worked seven days a week from sunup to sundown. Mm -hmm. um, we ate rice, uh, so we didn't have proper nutrition. We did not have uh, proper sleep. Um, but it was a really long journey to get to Jonestown. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so you were in the group for quite a number of years and got yeah. persuaded that Paradise was in in Guyana. Yes, and, it was uh, couched in biblical terms, you know, promised land and all this. Um, but um, and it was anything but that. You know? Right. And Vernon, you, um, you know, we've talked in the past and you had told me that you found my book after uh, you, you, you survived in the hospital, and all the surgeries, and, and, it, and, it, and you said it really helped you have a frame to understand what had happened. Could you just share a little bit about that? Well, when I came back from Jonestown, I had a long recovery and um, I had a lot of, my reentry was very difficult. And so um, I had a lot of disassociation and, uh, from my surroundings. And the book, Combating Cult Mind Control, was kind of like my Bible. I, um, I, I used it to find out what happened to me, mm. what happened to my mind. Mm. Uh, how did this journey, how did it happen? And so from the book, I learned about you know, behavior control, uh, information control, time control, emotional control, and that, um, you know, I came to the temple at a very vulnerable time in my life. Yeah. And, um, they were, they were the family I didn't have. Mm -hmm. Estranged from my family because of racism. Mm -hmm. and, um, they became the embracing, you know, the embracing loving family that I didn't have. Right. Right. So there's a there's a professor, I guess a sociology professor, Rebecca Moore, who has a website up and who has written and said there was no brainwashing uh, in Jonestown. And when I first heard about her and started reading her stuff, I you know, couldn't make sense of it. Some of my colleagues, like John Atak, who's a former Scientologist, even he recently did a podcast 
about Rebecca Moore and just how it doesn't make sense. Her academic position does not, you know. Yeah, I know Rebecca work. very well. Um, I've been a guest in her home. I don't understand where she's coming from at all. Sure, her two sisters both were very close to Jim Jones and, and died there and had a, by her own words, had um, sort of an instrumental um, part of the massacre happening. Um, they actually yeah, put the cyanide in the in the flavor yeah. aid. Yes. Yeah. Um, her one sister was a um, Jones's um, mistress, and the other, her other sister was a um, the nurse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The nurse. And so, we were chatting earlier, and you said that that of all the books on on Jones, you. You like this one, Raven? I like Raven. I love Seductive Poison. Uh, Seductive Poison is by a survivor also of Jonestown, Deborah Layton, who I've actually met in person and done some TV shows uh, many years ago with. Yeah, her, her brother is actually the one who shot me. And yeah, and he went to jail for a long time, but I heard that he is now out. Of jail. He went to jail. I think he was in prison for 18 years. Yeah, 18 yeah. years. It's and probably, Vernon, you went, you went, uh, let me interrupt you just for a second. You became a police officer for how yeah. many years? 28. 28 years. So you, you survived this horrible tragedy and you went into a life of service helping protect the public and, and yes. helping others. Yes. It's amazing. You're an amazing man. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I testified at Larry Layton's trial. So, I mean, uh, excuse me, at his parole hearing. Uh huh. So could be released. I mean, um, I felt that he was the same. Him and I were very similar in that we were under the same type of conditions. Right. Because originally, Larry Layton's personality was out of a pacifist. Right. Yeah, as was mine, uh, and so. Yeah, and I want to just say, when I was in the Moonies, I went from a pacifist, you know, protest the war in Vietnam into a condition and trained to kill on command or die on command, you know, right. from the moon cult. So I get it completely, how and someone you about in your body could, you know, shoot about creating, creating a... Um, uh, kind of a false personality and overlay it onto the authentic self. Exactly. That's what happened to me. Um, and Jones used things that were actually real, that were happening. You know, it was a, a leftist movement for, you know, to create a society with, with equality. And yeah. so racism was certainly a fact that happened there. The government was infiltrating uh, different progressive organizations, and uh, so it was. It was real, you know. The 1973, uh, I think it was in uh, Chile, and mm -hmm. the overthrow there, um, and the brutality of it. Uh, all those things were real. So there was a um, there was a truth connected to um, you know his 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 teachings. And yeah, and I would say all cult leaders have some truth. And then they, they, they create a whole story uh, and then they make themselves the center, central figure of that story and more or less expect everyone to follow them blindly. Yes, and it was in the beginning was, uh, um, uh, you know, the end of the world it was coming. You know, Armageddon. Which was very, very real in the time yep. that I grew up. We were hiding under our desks in school trainings for, so when the nuclear bomb. Yeah, me off, too, buddy. I was getting under the wooden desk also because the Russians yeah, that would really getting... helped a lot, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's the same period because I, in the moon cult, they were using Armageddon was 1977 and it was 1974 when I got recruited and it was scary times. It was, it was a time of uh, a lot of political activism and, uh, people were really involved. It was, 
and and I was. And yeah. So the movement appealed to that part of myself as well as my uh, emotional needs. Uh, right. There was a chance to be a part of something bigger than myself. Yeah, that yeah. certainly was appealing for me. You know, they were saying, you want to be a poet and teach English writing? Like, why don't you want to change the world? Why don't you come and join us and we can make the world a, a utopia, right? Yeah. I was 19 and, you know, uh, the women were pretty and flirty with me. I had no idea that they didn't uh, allow any type of kissing or hugging even. <laughs> And then we had to have a mass wedding in the Moonies. But anyway, back to Jonestown. I kind of, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but like, what would you like to say? We're coming up on the 40th anniversary of this cult horror. And you, you're, you are a living testifier about it. What would you like everyone to know who might be watching this? Um that this could this could happen to anyone uh being a part of a cult which nobody you know joins a cult they join a group or a movement right that that they see as uh, as worthwhile and um just like in your book um you know can you be a a full member of the of your group and dissent and disagree with a leader disagree with what everyone else thinks and still be a member of the group in good standing. You know? That's a really good point, actually. That's and, and whether or not you'll feel a lot of social pressure, even if they don't officially kick you out, kick you out, if you feel such oppressive pressure from everybody that there's yeah. something wrong with you for dissenting or asking a question, that should be an alarm bell that there's you know, something wrong. Corporal punishment, of course. Um, taking up all of your time is all your time scheduled uh, doing all worthwhile you know events of course we wrote legislators on uh, progressive bills that were happening we uh, participated in, in protests uh, uh, political uh, activities uh, we had our newspaper of course we had to get out the news yeah the message to everyone and and also fundraising and um very long lengthy services right so, um, and didn't jones do fake faith healings yes he did he did faith healings because he appealed to um churches yeah and kind of some people say stole people from their churches but uh with the um this under the guise that he was a healer and right he had a very intricately orchestrated um, um faith healings that he did mm -hmm. and, um, so but also talk about you know sexual exploitation if, if somebody wants to you know have sex with you for whatever reason you know for jones it was probably for the cause everything was for the cause of socialism uh, and so much of his movement had nothing to do with socialism. Right. Uh, right. So abuse of sex by the leader who has more power is a big warning sign. Someone who takes up all your time where you have no vacations, no time to reflect, you know, no ability to talk to even former members or critics because those are all demonized, right? Because they're against the movement. Yes. And uh, any, any endeavor, any attempts to uh, disconnect a person from their family, uh -huh. from their, their support base or their, their origin because they want, um, there's an attempt to get you away from really your authentic self because now right. you're a member of the cult you're for us it was you're a socialist you're a revolutionary and all your energy needs to be directed towards that unless of course you're a selfish inconsiderate very shallow person <laughs> who cares about nothing right cares about, doesn't care about racism starving children right <laughs> in your own selfish pleasures then 
So it's yeah, kind of I have to laugh because it's exactly the rap that was used in the Moonies and this binary of you're either with us and you're good and, or you're selfish and you're fallen and you're you know sinful and Satan is taking you over. And it's incredible. It's us versus them, or really us versus them, very black and white. There's nothing yeah. in between. And yep. There's always the enemy out there, and you are chosen. Mm -hmm. You're chosen. You're chosen for this uh, uh, great task. Great, great task. Great opportunity. Everything is measured by was measured by what kind of socialist are you? Are you a good socialist or a bad socialist? Are you are you living up to your potential of being a revolutionary, or are you lacking in character? <laughs> do you have what it takes really right and of course the cult always defines what it takes which means you be dependent and obedient and work tirelessly and say yes sir and what be willing else? to make the sacrifice yeah you have to sacrifice you know you know sacrifice your time with your family or your children or you know your money mm -hmm. you know, if you're really sincere about what you're you believe in, then you put your money there. Right. Yeah, they asked for total total everything, right? It was uh it was a, it, it reminds me now of a, a present day cult called the Twelve Tribes or the Messianic communities. They more or less say they're doing Jesus's work and you have to give everything over. So you have to give up all all your possessions, your family, grow a beard, you know and uh live communally you can't live on your own and be yeah, part of this was, great thing with jim jones it was apostolic socialism because in the bible jesus says sell all you have and give it to the poor uh-huh so this is what jesus did jesus was actually a socialist right so, except jim jones didn't sell everything he had and give it to the poor he kept it for himself right well he basically owned everything right yeah so right so it would be financial exploitation so if you have no money uh, or financial resources then you don't have the power to lead right you no know? uh and it's if all your alliance is to the group even for if, if you're from a religious background or if you have a spiritual life or a spiritual um, practice um to transfer that energy to the group right you know jim jones was supposed to be the incarnation of jesus and lenin too <laughs> jesus and lenin that's good and lenin, yes night rich of uh, past life there um so he was everything um so and so Vernon, I wanna, I, we're gonna need to wrap up shortly, but there's something that's bothered me for 40 years. Um, it's, the tr it's the phrase, drinking the Kool-Aid. And the, the, the young people, 20 years and, and younger, who weren't old enough to know about what really happened at Jonestown, kind of say it as a joke even, and it, it was never funny to me and i wonder if you could comment on that expression i'm sure you must hear people yes socially back, just say that coming back from south america and re-entering society when i came back there was jonestown jokes um mm -hmm. which were extremely hurtful but you know drinking the kool-aid has become a part of our cultural uh, expression i guess it means that you know, you give up yourself or you just blindly obey something. Um, I think that's came, true. It came from um, Jonestown. It came from that, the, the massacre. And young people today, they don't even know that it existed because they weren't born uh, during that time. But that's where the saying comes from. Right. And, and so for me, honoring the people who died at the hands of this cult leader, really demands learning about it. And look, there's some documentaries that have been done. There are these books like Raven and Seductive Poison. People should actually do their homework and, and learn about it 
and not not just for the past. There was a sign apparently that Jones had. Those who, what, what's the saying? Those who don't remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Yeah, those who don't remember the past are, um, are something about repeating the past. I think it's condemned condemned to repeat it, and. So, but the point is, is that as we go into the future, my exhortation is wake up people, you know, smart people can be mind controlled. <laughs> you know, yeah. Smart people can be duped and deceived and, and isolated and indoctrinated and don't follow anyone blindly and like right. think, use your, your God-given mind to analyze and reality test. Yes, yes. Um, and it's very seductive to be a part of a group, and to be a part of a cause, of something worthwhile that you're dedicating your life to. Um, but if it comes at a cost, the, the saying, and I'm sure you've heard it, Stephen, you know, the ends justifies the means. You know, so it doesn't matter what you do as long as you get there. And it, of course, does affect the ends. Uh, oh, it, the means I create know. the ends is what I learned after getting out of the Moonies. Right, it was right. like, if we're lying now, how is that going to create an ideal world where there's truth? You know, if we're lying in the Moonies, how do we get to a place of honesty? The and also the, uh, the, the, the management of information. Right. I know Scientology does that. Don't read the newspaper. You know, don't they all lie? Right. Like that was one of the last things that Jim Jones said to me. You know, don't talk to the media. They're all liars. You know. Is that really? He said that personally to you? Yes. Wow. So, so we're gonna need to wrap up, Vernon. Just anything else you'd like to share? Just uh, for people to ask a lot of questions and you know, use the litmus test about being able to disagree sexual exploitation, financial exploitation, your, anything to do with your family, breaking away from your family, your loved ones, your partner, um, your religious beliefs. Right. If, if they're really, if the cause is really worthwhile, then you should be able to enjoy your own uh, spiritual life as well. Yeah, that's really very profound. If it's spiritual. legitimate, it will stand up to scrutiny. Yes. And if you if it's spiritual, there should be peace and there should be compassion and kindness and love. Yes. And conscience and goodness and and yes. creativity and humor. And also, do you do, like you you said, do you have time to be alone? Hmm. Are you do you have time to be alone to reflect? You know, towards the end of my experience, I, I was never alone, ever. Right. So when I came back to the U.S., and being alone was very, very frightening. And uh, so the conditioning happens over a period of time. You yeah. may not see it happening. It's a slow process. Right. But I want to end on a positive note that you are a survivor and a thriver. I'm a survivor. I'm a thriver. Um, thriver, and I, um, you know, served as an officer for 28 years. And um, was involved involved with my community and being an active part. And I still am very active in the political process. Mm -hmm. and it's very important to me um, to stay awake and look what's going on around me. Right. So, yeah. yeah. There's. Yeah, I'm a survivor. You know. Um, and a thriver, and I can't help but notice the beautiful artwork and, 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 and religious um, art that you have behind you. I love beauty. I love beauty, and uh, I have a rich spiritual life as well. You know, I'm a Buddhist, and Buddhism doesn't really, you can have what, do whatever you want. You don't have to be dedicated to a Buddha. To a Buddha, you can just be kind. Really, Buddhism is about being kind. Yeah, and being awake. Being awake, having right speech, having right work. Right. You know, it doesn't really, you could believe in Jesus if you want to. Uh, it doesn't interfere. Right. It's just about, about being awake and being kind. Great. So thank you, Vernon, for taking this time out. 
uh, we're going to put it into a blog and we're going to, you know, spread your words around. Okay. okay. And thank you very, very much. And I hope to meet you in person one day and give you a hug. I'd love to. Yeah, really. Thank, thank you, you again. For writing the book. Okay. Okay, take care.